In this video, we'll be ranking the original British children's Harry Potter book covers as part of our series to create the ultimate Harry Potter jacket art tier list. People of the internet, Retro Reconteur here. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm just a dad who loves games and the stories they tell. We post videos every week here, including old school Harry Potter Let's Plays, Hogwarts Legacy News, and plenty more. If you're interested in that, then make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any of our new videos. If you didn't know, the Harry Potter books have been translated into more than 80 different languages, and I thought it would be a fun idea to look at the art from around the world to see which covers are the best. We'll be using a scale inspired by OWLs from the Harry Potter series, which means top marks will deem outstanding, followed by exceeds expectations, acceptable, poor, and then troll at the bottom. We'll be basing this tier list solely on the front covers and not the full jacket art. As always, remember this is all in good fun and no offense is meant to any of the original illustrators of these covers. Remember, the great thing about art is that it's open to your interpretation, so I invite your feedback. After you've watched, let me know if you agree with any of these, and of course, if you think I'm wrong on any of these, let me know about that as well. Okay, moving on to the British editions here. Now, these are the British children's editions. When these came out in the UK, as my UK friends know, they also released adult editions as well. Those were just, I don't know, kind of boring to be honest with you, in my opinion. So I went with the kids edition here for our tier list. Also, I know you can't see the American rating right now, but don't worry, at the end, I'm gonna put all of them back up there so you can see how all of them stack up together. Okay, starting off with the British editions, we have Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. And we've got Harry depicted here with the scar and standing in front of the Hogwarts Express. You can see platform nine and three quarters in the background. Now, this one was also quite iconic for me because I remember looking online and being like, whoa, that's the original. You know, this is the first one that came out, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. But sorry to my UK friends, to me, this one just does not capture that same level of magic that I got from Mary Grand Prey's Sorcerer's Stone. So for me, this one's okay. There's nothing that I really dislike strongly about it, but it's just not all that great to me. There's nothing that really jumps out and says, oh my goodness, this is a book about magic and this crazy world that this young man is going to find. So for me, I'm going to put this one in the acceptable category. Don't hate me, guys. I'm sorry. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Honestly, I don't love the way that Harry and Ron look in this one, to be to be totally honest. I do like how you kind of have the clouds going along with the Ford Anglia. Almost looks like it's kind of a part of the clouds. <laughs> you got Hedwig in the back there. But to be honest, yet again, this one is just acceptable for me. I mean, there, there's nothing that screams magic here. Okay, fine. You do, you do have a flying car, I admit. But again, there's just, to me, there's nothing super magical about this one just kind of okay for me. Okay, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the Bloomsbury edition here. Again, we see the same scene, Harry and Hermione riding Buckbeak here in front of the moon there in the background. Now, what I really do love about this one is how the moon serves that extra purpose. At first glance, or before you read the book, you wouldn't even think about the fact that, oh, there might be a werewolf involved. And one thing that I'm not sure if was intentional or not, I'm pretty sure this part up here is meant to be Hermione's cloak, but doesn't that kind of look like a Dementor a little bit to you as well? I don't know if that's intentional, like if it's hinting that maybe that's a Dementor. All in all though, again, another acceptable cover here. Now we're talking. This one, an awesome action scene. Of course, this is showing the task where Harry has to take on the Hungarian Horntail and he's going for the egg there on his broom. I love the way the dragon looks here. I love the way we get this action shot of Harry racing over to get the egg. This one definitely exceeds expectations for me. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This one right here is probably my favorite cover of the British editions. Fox is obviously one of the most incredible magical creatures in the entire series. And the fact that this one is named Order of the Phoenix, it only makes sense. This is a great time to be able to use Fox on the cover. Of course, Fox also plays a prominent role near the end of the book when he takes on a killing curse from Voldemort. It's aimed at Dumbledore. Of course, Fox gets kind of exploded there for the moment, but we know he's eventually reborn. This one, another exceeds expectations. Okay, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. First of all, I love this scene choice much better than the American, the Mary Grand Prix edition. I think this was the right choice for the scene. This is such an incredible moment. Of course, we know Dumbledore is in a very weakened state here. We're, we're building toward that climax that's going to happen at the top of the Astronomy Tower in just a few pages after this scene takes place. 
I don't love the way that Dumbledore and Harry look here. I get that they're meant to be under incredible distress. I'm not a huge fan of the way they're portrayed, but because of the fact that I think what the illustrator is going for here is that this is in a very intense moment, obviously, for them. Dumbledore, fearing for his life, knows what's about to come. He's just drank this horrible potion, and Harry is kind of freaking out, like, dude, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I think I will put that one in. Exceeds expectations as well. And finally, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, the British children's edition. Guys, I gotta be honest, I'm torn on this one. I'm torn on this one. I want to love this cover. I, I really do, because it is so unique. I love the look on Ron and Hermione's faces, just like the sheer terror that Ron has at what's going on. It's almost more humorous for me, though, than grand epic conclusion to this incredible series. To me, it's not powerful enough to show just how incredible that book is. And I realize that's a tall task to make a piece of artwork that captures the spirit of the book, that gets people interested. This would get me interested in the book. I would be intrigued to read this, even if I didn't know what was going on here. But ultimately, I just have to go with another acceptable here. So let's pull in our rating for the American editions now so we can compare these all together. By the way, not really sure what I'm going to do here as we add more covers, but hey, we'll figure that out when the time comes, I suppose. Anyway, you can see that so far, most of the covers are falling into the exceeds expectations and acceptable categories. So far, we only have two earning top marks with outstanding, and we haven't had any so far fall into poor or troll. Let me know which Harry Potter book covers you'd like to see me rank next, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.